Hello everybody and welcome to another video where I talk about Age of Empires 2 stats that exist but absolutely do not matter. If you're new to this whole thing and you haven't seen my playlist, they're short little videos. They're all fairly interesting, I think. The playlist is in the description, so make sure to check that out. But now that I have you, let's talk about the most successful civilizations by game mode in Age of Empires 2. Now, there is one game mode that Age of Empires 2 is known for above everything else, and that is called Random Map. So if someone says RM, I used to think that meant Ranked Match, but no, RM is simply just Random Map. Now, typical Ranked Play is seen as Random Map. However, you can play Random Map and Unranked as well. That is all designated by the selection you have at the top right of the lobby. You'll notice that there are other options there. So you've got uh, Empire Wars, for example. Uh, there is also an Empire Wars Q for ranked, for what it's worth. I'm sure you may have noticed that. You've got Deathmatch, uh, probably another common one. Uh, Deathmatch can actually be ranked in lobbies, for what it's worth. But then you have a bunch of other game modes, which you might see in some of my uploads with the community-style games. So we've got Capture the Relic, Defend the Wonder, King of the Hill, Regicide, Sudden Death, Turbo Random Map, and then Wonder Race. All of these are separate game modes within Age of Empires 2, though many of them aren't seen as frequently as others. So we've got the top three for all civilizations and their successes in these game modes. Let's get into it. The first thing to note here is that some game modes have no Civ over 50% win rate. There are two possible explanations for this. Either this is a mistake in the stats, or the game mode is frequently used for free-for-all or diplomacy games, in which case multiple players lose each time. Weirdly, this is even the case for random map, which you wouldn't necessarily expect to be the case if you were to have looked at ranked random map stats because there are a lot of civilizations over 50%. But anyways, for this video, we're just gonna assume that the stats there are accurate. For Capture the Relic, it looks like the top three is Huns, Spanish, and Burgundians. Weirdly, none of these civilizations have any significant bonuses towards them. Uh, civs with a really strong early eco bonus, like maybe Italians, Lithuanians, or Mongols, to allow you to get to Castle Age and then get monks out early would make a lot of sense, but these three don't seem to show up there. Even so another Civ like Burmese would make sense, or possibly Aztecs, as they're very strong with their monks. But again, Huns, Spanish, and Burgundians have no obvious bonus. Huns are also the most popular civilization. Theoretically, with the 35 Civs at the release of the Definitive Edition, each Civ should tend towards a little less than 2.9%. For Huns to be selected nearly 5% of the time suggests that this is a little more than random and a lot of people like picking Huns. If I had to guess, both these civilizations have great cavalry. Uh, players who play these civilizations probably go for light cav, dominate the middle, kill other monks, and then take the relics for themselves. Moving on to deathmatch, uh, the top three are Gurjaras, Dravidians, and Persians. Uh, traditionally, in deathmatch events, players used mirror civilizations to try and maintain a little bit more balance. But in friendly lobbies, this isn't necessary. I'm really surprised to see Gurjaras and Dravidians excelling, considering they're new civilizations. But if I had to guess, I would say that if someone bought the civilizations recently, they probably wanted to test out the units a lot. And with those elephants existing and deathmatch normally incorporating a lot of floating resources... I can imagine that there are probably a lot of short games which influence the stats here. You got to keep in mind as well that Persians is third, and Persians, I mean, they can go paladins. But also, if you've got those resources, you're probably going to make elephants too. So if I had to guess, I think a bunch of people just made a bunch of elephants, and that's why these civilizations are so high there. Moving on to defend the wonder, uh, we have Gurjaras, Huns, and then the Britons. See, I see defend the wonder as more of a classic game mode. And I see Huns and Britons as classic civilizations. So I feel like people who picked those civilizations and got in there had a lot of experience with the game mode. I'm surprised to see Gurjaras, and again, a new civilization, retain their top spot in this game mode. 59% win rate is incredibly high, suggesting that the Gurjaras are completely dominant in free-for-all scenarios, or just that this game mode is played in 1v1s more often than I thought. The Gurjaras have been dominating competitive play for a few months, or pretty much ever since they've been released. Many people have had some pretty big questions on why the devs hadn't nerfed them more. So again, I'm thinking maybe 1v1s, more people play it than I thought, and Gurjaras just have the ticket to answer every civilization right now. Moving on to Empire Wars, we have Burgundians, Gurjaras, and Poles. So again, 
civilizations from recent expansions. And this one's a little bit tricky because I do know quite a bit about Empire Wars, and I really don't think that these civilizations are necessarily top three there. But I think they can be top three for the average player if you think about how Empire Wars starts work. You do start with quite a bit of villagers and, and resources, and I think with those civilizations, you can make your economy quite strong. And when you have that many villagers at the start and you have the options of Burgundians, Gurjaras, and Poles, I can imagine you could make life very difficult for your opponent. I'm absolutely loving the consistency here. So King of the Hill is the next game mode. And King of the Hill, another classic game mode, kind of like Defend the Wonder, something that's been around a really long time, unlike Empire Wars. And so what do we have? We have Huns, then the Franks, then the Britons. So clearly people are picking civilizations they're familiar with and game modes they're familiar with over time. And so Huns shows up again in this leaderboard, but you've got the Franks showing up for the first time. And then, of course, the Britons are soon behind. Ransom map is one that we touched on a little bit earlier, and we have Poles, Burgundians, and Gurjaras. Again, expansion civilizations. Poles have been so strong for so long, have the ability to spam their Cavalier at a price that I feel is far too cheap combined with their other bonuses. Burgundians and Gurjaras right behind them with some sick stuff as well. Again, what's unique about the random map stats is that no civilization has over 50% win rate, which, you know, it's got to be complicated, right? Because random map can be played in free-for-all. You know, random map does not necessarily mean that this is just a 1v1 or 2v2. It doesn't even mean even teams as far as I know with the stats. So to not have any save over 50% tells me we're pulling in a lot of data from some wacky settings. However, Poles, Burgundians, and Gurjaras are really strong in random map tournaments at the high level. So I'm not surprised that these civilizations are also in this top three uh, for everything as a whole. We're going to show the last three sections here at the same time and just kind of loop it all in together here. And they're all very different, but somehow still the same. You've got Regicide, Sudden Death, and then Turbo Random Map. And first for all of these, Burgundians, Burgundians, Burgundians. People love their Burgundians. Uh, for Regicide, we have Spanish coming in at second which fits competitive play as Spanish are seen as one of the best regicide civilizations. And then Huns afterwards, which is a little surprising, but again, it's a comfortable civilization for many people. For Sudden Death and Turbo Random Map, we have Gurjaras yet again showing up in second place. And then uh, you've got third place Huns for Sudden Death. And then you've got Bengalis coming in at Turbo Random Map, which came out of nowhere for me, though I'm not sure how many games we've really collected here for the data on Turbo Random Map. Oh, and I almost forgot, excuse me, we actually have Wonder Race. And a Wonder Race, we've got the Teutons, we've got the Spanish, and we've got the Khmer there. Again, the Spanish being a civilization that probably should be a go-to, as they do build faster than any other civilization, and the whole goal in that game mode is to build wonders. Now, this was a lot of data thrown at you, a lot of civilizations to talk about, lots of things to speculate on, lots of things to talk about, and I'm sure your brains are probably churning. But don't hesitate, and don't worry about it, guys, because for the most part, these stats, they don't really matter. Like I said, even for random map, where I could turn that into a conversation about overall balance, these guys, it could have been 1v1v1v1v1 games. I have no clue, but the data's there. It was cool to talk about, and well, I hope you had a good time. So once again, if you enjoyed this video, if you want to hear some thoughts on more stats, if you have any ideas for me, whatever it may be, please leave me a comment. Please leave me a like on the video. And I will see you all soon with more Age of Empires 2 commentary. So once again, ladies and gents, thank you very much for watching and bearing with me as we talk about stats that really don't make a difference. Uh, if you have any ideas on stats I could possibly dive into, no promises, but please leave me a comment. If there was a stat that stood out to you here, or if you maybe play these game modes or have any insight as to why some of the stats might show this way, I would love to hear that as well. Many of you may know this, but just in case you don't, I also have a second and then a third YouTube channel, uh, still Age of Empires 2 focused, but it's just extra content. So we have the T90 Extras channel. We're actually close to like 10,000 subscribers on that. Uh, I tend to put uh, some of my gameplay things there, uh, whether that be Age of Empires or sometimes Farming Simulator, which I've been trying out. Anyways, if you want extra content and just you know want to have that there in case you didn't have enough of an Age of Empires 2 fix from the main channel, you can check that out. And then if you like clips or, or YouTube shorts, uh, some short form content, we've got the other link in the description. That's it for me, though. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. I hope to see you all next time.
Have a good one.